Stable isotopes serve as tracers of many processes, providing information on how chemical reactions proceed in nature. For instance, we can use stable isotopes to understand rock forming processes, the hydrological cycle, and also physiological and environmental signals in plant materials. To quantify the changes in the relative abundance of these isotopes involved in these processes, we use the delta notation. But what is the delta notation and where does it come from? Today, we will talk about the delta notation using as examples the isotopes of oxygen, carbon and hydrogen. First, we know the terrestrial abundances of each of these stable isotopes. Carbon has two stable isotopes of interest, carbon-13, the heavier one, with a terrestrial abundance of 1.1%, and carbon-12, the lighter one, with a terrestrial abundance of 98.9%. Likewise, oxygen has three stable isotopes of interest, the heavier one, oxygen-18, with an abundance of 0.204%, the intermediate, oxygen-17, with an abundance of 0.037%, and the lighter one, oxygen-16, with an abundance of 99.796%. Now, hydrogen has two stable isotopes. Hydrogen-2, referred to as deuterium, has an abundance of 0.15%, and hydrogen-1, referred to only as hydrogen, has an abundance of 99.85%. Stable environmental isotopes are measured as the ratio between the two most abundant isotopes of a given element. You may have noticed that the most abundant one is always the lighter one, and the second most abundant is actually a heavier one with a very low abundance and this is why we refer to them as the rare isotope. We are always looking at the difference in abundance between the rare or heavier isotope and the most abundant lighter isotope. So, based on natural abundances, the oxygen-18 to oxygen-16 ratio is 0.00204, the deuterium to hydrogen ratio is 0.015, and the carbon-13 to carbon-12 ratio is 1.11. Now, each of these heavy and light isotopes may be part of molecules, which will have different masses according to the isotopes they are composed of. For example, some of the arrangements of isotopes in water produce compounds with different masses. For instance, water with two hydrogens with masses of 1 and one oxygen with mass 18 has a total mass of 20. Water with one hydrogen with mass 1, one deuterium with mass 2 and one oxygen with mass 16 has a total mass of 19. And finally, water with two hydrogens with masses of 1 and one oxygen with mass 16 has a total mass of 18. Molecules with differences in mass will react at different reaction rates. This means that there will be partitioning or fractionation of isotopes during reactions involving these molecules, as described by Urey in 1947. Fractionation of isotopes will modify these ratios slightly for any given compound containing the stable isotopes. And by slightly, I mean that variations are seen only at the fifth or sixth decimal place. Measuring an absolute isotope ratio or abundance is not easily done. Luckily, what we are interested in doing is comparing the variation in stable isotope concentration to a known concentration, rather than measuring a true ratio for the sample, 
which is difficult to do. We do this by measuring an apparent ratio in the sample, which can be easily done by gas source mass spectrometry, and then measuring a known reference on the same machine at the same time. This way, we can compare our sample to the reference. This is expressed as the delta notation. We here show the delta nu, where nu stands for nuclide. The delta of the nuclide is the isotopic concentration expressed as the difference between the measured ratios of the sample and reference over the measured ratio of the reference. These ratios, represented by the letter R over here, are the same ratios we mentioned before when we gave the examples of oxygen-18 to oxygen-16, deuterium to hydrogen, and carbon-13 to carbon-12. Because fractionation processes will impart very little variations in isotopic concentrations, delta values are expressed as parts per thousand or per mil difference from the reference. This is why we multiply everything by 1000. Rearranging the terms in this equation, we find the form that is most commonly seen in textbooks. Note that the nuclide here will always be the heavy isotope, like oxygen-18, deuterium, and carbon-13. The reference will always have to be stated and will depend on the type of sample we are working with. So let's say we are talking about delta weighting in water samples. The standard reference for water, according to the United Nations International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, is known as VSMO, which stands for Vienna Standard Mean Ocean Water. As the name suggests, this is the standard mean ratio for seawater. So, in this case, we would write Delta O18 equals the ratio of oxygen 18 to oxygen 16 in the sample over the ratio of oxygen 18 to oxygen 16 in this mole minus 1. We multiply this value by 1000 so we obtain a total per mil value. So, what would the delta per mil value for this mole be? Let's plug that into the equation. If we want to know the Vismo delta per mil value, this means that Vismo is our sample. But it is also our reference, since Vismo is a water sample. Therefore, the ratio of these ratios is 1, since they are equal. 1 minus 1 is 0. Thus, the Vismo delta per mil value is always 0 per mil. This is also true for any other reference we might be working with for other materials. So let's talk about what positive and negative values might mean. If we have a delta per mil value that is positive, let's say plus 10 per mil, this means that our sample has 10 per mil or 1% more oxygen 18 than Vismo. In this case, we usually say that the sample is enriched by 10 per mil. Now, if we have a delta per mil value that is negative, let's say minus 5 per mil, this means that our sample has 5 per mil or 0.5% less oxygen 18 than this mole. We then say that our sample is depleted by 5 per mil. Having one sample that is 10 per mil enriched, whereas another is 5 per mil depleted with respect to this mole, which is the standard value for mean ocean water, can tell us a lot about possible past pathways of our sample and the fractionation processes involved. Some of these processes are evaporation and precipitation, for example. Just like there is Vismo for hydrogen and oxygen in water, there are other standards for other materials and isotopes of interest. Examples are shown in this table here. For instance, VPDB is the standard used for both carbon and oxygen in carbonates. 
VPDB stands for Vienna PV belemnite and represents the standard value measured in fossil belemnites, which were mollusks found in a formation called PD in the United States. We will discuss in more detail the nature of these standards and the relationship between them in our next video.